Life Audio. Welcome to Christian Natural Health with naturopathic Dr. Lauren DeVille. Christian Natural Health is the podcast on how to get and stay healthy God's way. You'll hear topics on nutrition, exercise, sleep, avoiding toxicity, meditating on scripture, what supplements to take, stress management, defeating anxiety and worry, how to reconcile Eastern medicine approaches with Christianity, and a whole lot more. Now, here's your host, Dr. Lauren. Have you ever found yourself in a moment with your loved ones where you were there, but you weren't all there? Let's be honest. We've all given our leftovers to our biggest fans instead of our best. For Dr. Josh and Christy Straub, marriage and leadership coaches and hosts of the Famous at Home podcast. With a realistic, grace-filled look at the struggles families face, we cover topics designed to help you become a rock star under your roof, set healthy rhythms between work and home, and build a rock-solid marriage. Because the greatest red carpet you'll ever walk is through your front door. Welcome back to another episode of Christian Natural Health. Today, I am excited to have Reverend David Peterson with us. Reverend Peterson is an ordained pastor and a board-certified chaplain with over 30 years of experience in ministry into congregations, as well as chaplaincy experience in hospitals, fire and EMS, law enforcement, and hospice. He's provided emotional and spiritual care on the scenes of devastating events from 9-11 to school shootings and various community tragedies. And in 1994, he founded Shepherd Staff Pastoral Services, where he was able to provide spiritual care to thousands via chaplains he trained and placed at long-term care facilities across the U.S. A study in resiliency and forgiveness, David has lived all his life with tremors in his hands and arms and navigated the bullying, harassment, and and embarrassing moments that it has invited from those who lack understanding and empathy. At the age of 12, he was targeted by a neighborhood pedophile who used alcohol, pornography, and affirmation to abuse him sexually, emotionally, spiritually, and mentally. Years of silence, anger, shame, and self-destructive behaviors followed before healing and forgiveness transformed him. David and his wife, Arden, as well as their four sons and their families, reside in Chesapeake, Virginia. Welcome, David. Thanks so much for joining us. Dr. Lauren, what an honor to be with you today. Thank you so much. So that's an incredible story. So that's absolutely amazing. Tell us a little bit about your journey for forgiveness. Like, I, I don't know how somebody would go about you know, transforming everything that you've been through. So, so how, how did you do it and how do other people do it? Well, it, first off, it's, it's not a me. It's a, it's completely, a, I couldn't imagine doing this without the Lord because God's presence in my life um, has brought me the greatest measure of comfort while I was going through it, through the difficulties as well as um, provided the change Um to to uh, get me moving in the direction that he would have for me. And that's a direction that leads to a much more transparent and real and um, connecting husband, father, pastor, and all that I do. Yeah, absolutely. It's only by him. Absolutely. And so I think so often when we see these impossible mandates in scripture, the, the way that we do it is we don't do it by our own strength. We have to learn to rely on him. But sometimes that can feel like a Christian platitude, though. So how does somebody go about actually relying on him? Like, wh- what do you tell people when they struggle with that? <laughs> well, all, all I could do is share from my own story. And, um, you know, I had to come to realize that there was a, a point in my life, uh, you know, it was around 35 or so. And now I'm married and I have at that point two kids. And um, I come to realize that I have symptoms of unforgiveness that are just, you know, brewing in my life. And um, I had to come to realize that I had some things that I really needed to surrender to the Lord and for him to get a hold of. And I had to realize that I was a junkie. I was addicted to unforgiveness, you know, and that, that can happen. And so like many folks in the 12 step program, recognizing you have a problem is the first step and then surrendering and saying, God, I can't do this without you. What I had, Dr. Lauren, I had, like a, a nuclear power plant that was inside of me and it was always 
energy. It was always manufacturing more anger and more bitterness. And um, it it was, it provided its own anger, you know, energy source. And um, what I, I've come to encounter is um, an authenticity in my relationships with others, including with myself and God that um, doesn't repel folks, but welcomes them into my space Mm -hmm. in a healthy way. Yeah, absolutely. I'm really curious what you mean by that when you say you were addicted to forgiveness, unforgiveness. What was it doing for you, quote unquote, that you were getting from it that made you not want to give it up? Oh, I mean... When um, when you realize that there is an, a true energy source in keeping that anger brewing. Oh, interesting. Okay. And going back to it and, you know, but my identity, I came to realize, is not in that. It's not in what I had been through. Mm-hmm. My real identity is in Jesus Christ. Yes. And, and I wanted to see, I wanted to come to know, experience the identity that was me and Jesus. Right. And not me and the anger, although you know, the reality of what I'd been through was very real. And there's, I'm sure, pl- m- plenty of listeners that you have. Um, and I just want to speak to those folks right now and say, you're experience is real it's believed and um but it doesn't have to hold you captive and sometimes we get hooked on that like i said um it gives us the extra strength to make it through to toughen up as we think to survive um on, on various levels and i had to come to realize there's a price to pay for that um, fabricated energy, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it plays out in our in our own well being. Physically, mm-hmm. um, we've come to realize that there are physical effects that come into being because of unforgiveness, and resentment, mm-hmm. um, and anger that grates on our. Our, our physical, our uh, whole GI tract, our circulatory system, our cardiac level, as well as our emotional, our mental. There's a, a mental level. And if you spend all your time trying to compress this, contain it, it moves out in depression or anxiety or whatever. So uh, it just has mental, emotional, physical price tags Mm -hmm. Um, and moving forward in the line of forgiveness. And, you know, there's a lot of pastors and well-meaning people you probably experienced doctor that are like, well, you just have to forgive. You talk about a platitude, right? Look, is that any different than the Pharisees that, you know, Jesus talked about, you know, well unto you, you heap up heavy, Packs upon, you know, the backs of men and you don't do a thing to lift them off. Mm-hmm. Just simply saying, well, you have to forgive. And, you know, Jesus talks about forgiveness. But, you know, I love about it. If you stop and look, he models forgiveness. Yes, yes. Right. I mean, here we are. We're in Lent. We're going to come up into Holy Week and we're for it where we face the cross. And Jesus, when he encounters such uh, absolutely de- absolute devastation on so many levels. He says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. There's a first step. And so one of my, you know, I have 21 milestones to freedom, and one of them I claim that forgiveness is your chance to play God. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> I like to play God, you know. <laughs> I think about Jim Carrey, and, you know, some of those movies. <laughs> where he has, that one, Bruce Almighty. I need the to watch. Bruce Almighty. I had to think of it. Yeah, you're right. Uh-huh. And really, uh, 
if we want to have a chance to play God and experience that, you know, um, we can only do that with his power and his authority that's inside of us to say, you know, I forgive you. It does not, does not, does not, does not negate what you have been through. Absolutely. And that person may not deserve to be trusted again. But not everybody that hurts us or offends us absolutely intended to do that. And there's minor infractions, uh, you know, even just the minor folks, the folks chip us off or, you know, I, I call them sandpaper people. Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Have you ever done that where you cut out a little, you know, cut out a little, a little um, gingerbread man and, out of out of sandpaper mm-hmm. you know there are people in our lives that are just okay. man somehow they just you know they just grade us the wrong way but it's making us stronger it's making us shine that much more but there truly are predators out there don't deserve your trust right. they need to face justice mm-hmm. whether it's in a criminal court system a, a legal system Or however that is, all right? But then there's also folks, look, one of the greatest things Jesus said when he taught his disciples to pray was, um, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. What's that? It's basically a boundary violation. That's really what what a trespass is. And so sometimes we're going to say, hey, knock it off. Yeah, exactly. But there's also forgiveness. Now, another thing that Jesus taught Peter, you know, when he was approached, well, how many times do I need to forgive? Well, you may need to forgive over and over and over. And the forgiving journey is not smooth. Now, the front cover of my book has, I I think the shot is from the Appalachian Trail. Mm-hmm. And there are challenges, there are, there are threats along the way on that journey of forgiveness. But uh, it's it's you take one step at a time. And I just tried to do some milestones of, like I said, of things that I found helpful. Mm-hmm. And I I just pray that your listeners, uh, those you connect with have a chance to encounter this book because I continue to learn from this book. Yeah, sometimes. Absolutely. (laughs) Very cool. So So, um, tell us a little bit about how forgiveness is not the same as like that whole forgive and forget thing. What do you say to that phrase? Does that mean what it sounds like? What's that all about? You know, um, In the development of this book, one of the things I came to realize was not just 21 milestones, but the brain science that goes along with it. And you might find it really interesting, as I did when I was researching it and coming to realize things like dopamine, um, one of our brain chemicals, um, has an end goal in mind, and it propels us toward that. and as part of our forgive and forget, there's some things we like, we don't want to be hurt again exactly. in a particular way. And especially if we're violated at a very deep level, good thing to know, you know, as far as that goes, but really the, the uh, dopamine that's, that's swirling around in our brains will either propel us toward an end goal of reconnecting ideally with someone um, in a healthy relationship and a healthy way and pursue that wholeness, or it can propel us in the other direction, which is exacting vengeance on that person. And to ruminate about that and to think about, okay, first I'm going to, first I'm going to punch their lights out. Then I'm going to do this. And then, you know, all the way down, how am I going to get back at them? 
What this does is it gives us a chance not to be uh, not to be latched on, not to be hooked on to that person be, because uh, God wants us to live lives that are free of that. Yes. Right? Yeah, absolutely. But just as simply, you know, forgiveness is something you probably heard this before. We do for ourselves. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, uh, in the uh, intro, I start with a little story called um, unforgiveness is monkey business. Mm-hmm. And, and um, you know, it's a fun story that uh, goes like this. In, in Africa, uh, they're having a problem with monkeys. Mm-hmm. And so the townspeople didn't want to hurt these monkeys, but they didn't want them wreaking havoc. Right. And so they, have you heard this story before? <laughs> So they had to find a way of <laughs> dealing with them in a humane way. Mm-hmm. And so somebody figured out that if you take a little jar and you put a little bit of uh, put a little bit of banana or fruit in there. Yeah. And you yeah. attach that jar to a tree that the monkey would come along and put his hand in that jar. Oh. And you want to have a sense of opening his hand and escape them. You can't let it go. Oh, yeah. And so I talk about un- unforgiveness is monkey business because it's just yeah. then that somebody is able to come and either wipe them out or, you know, deal with them in another way. Right. Forgiveness, but simply that act of letting go, it really isn't just a self thing. We really need the Lord's help in letting go. Because yeah, I don't know about you, and I've got some man. I, yeah. <laughs> you, when you when you can pry this out of my dead lifeless hand, yeah. You know? exactly. So, well, <laughs> and I think part of the reason why it's so hard for us to let go and give it to God, or just let go in general, is mm-hmm. because we have that idea of but they deserve justice. So, yeah. How how would you respond to somebody who has that that uh, protest? Don't you think God has ways mm-hmm. of, of exacting justice in much better ways than and much create more creative ways? <laughs> True, absolutely. You or I could ever do that. Mm-hmm. I think about uh, the story in in Genesis about Joseph. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's such a good story. Isn't it a great story? <laughs> you know? Could you imagine, uh, Joseph, you know, we hear about when his brothers come back, yeah. he realizes it's just is a basket case, just is weeping and everything. But for him to be able to say, you meant it for evil, but yeah. God meant it for good. Yeah. And, and um, that God had dealt with them. And... Uh, isn't that, I mean, and, you know, to to think that we aren't sinners ourselves, to think that we aren't sinners, don't, don't we learn lessons like that? In fact, that's one of my uh, 21 milestones. It's the first one, is to see the offending sinner as a $20 sinner, and I am a $20 million sinner. And uh, you know, I yeah, I'm I'm not getting necessarily into the ways that I was violated, but when we stop and think, you know, well, we have no sin. And Jesus told the story about the guy, and you know where I'm going with this, about the the guy who was tossed into prison and he owed this huge amount, and then he's forgiven that huge amount. That's the twenty million dollars. And then he goes out, and what's he do? He shakes down a $20 offender and says, you got to go in there. And so the king hears about it and says, hey, buddy, I forgave you so much, and you can't even forgive that, okay? Exactly, yeah, for sure. So what if somebody says, okay, I'm going to forgive, and with the Lord's help, you know, we're moving forward into that, but they're still angry, and they're still hurt. What do you say to somebody yeah. that is experiencing that stage of the process? 
Dr. Lauren, all I can say is it's, you know, it's a day by day and sometimes five minutes at a time, or in my case, one minute at a time. And, and, uh, you know, from the moment, there's a while there from when, from the moment I opened my eyes, I had to say, I submit this to you, Lord, and say, you are Lord. Jesus is Lord. I need you to come and be Lord over this area of my life. Um, there's another, you know, one of my milestones where um, I talk about, yes, we will go back and we will rethink it. We'll rehash it as if it could have been any different. And maybe it could have been. Um, but perhaps the Lord has something he wants us to know about that event. And, you know, our ability to ruminate and go back and chew on stuff maybe is just our way of tr still trying to make sense yeah. of what happened, the unresolved feelings that we have. And maybe it's, it's an opportunity to say, Lord, you know what happened to me when I was whatever, how old, You were there when it happened. Is there something you want me to know about that experience? Or is there some way you want to show me where you were and what you were doing when that happened? And I, I just have found so much freedom because maybe the Lord just happens to show you that very thing. And maybe he shows you something. And maybe for the first time, you sense his presence. You sense that he was there. He was protecting you. Or, you know, he was keeping you from being further hurt. Yeah. Um, if we say that, you know, one of the most basic tenets of theology is that God is omnipresent. That means he was there. Yeah. Right? So those are some ways that uh, I've, I've learned to deal with it and surrendering it to him and going to him. And it's almost like what you're describing to me. It's, it's anytime I'm trying to hook up to a greater power source for whatever it is that I can't do myself. It's an act of faith that I recognize that I have the ability to draw on that power and it's the process of telling yourself, speaking the word over yourself so that it drops from head to heart. And you're doing that as an act of faith where eventually it will get down deep so that you can actually bear the fruit of forgiveness in this particular case. But well, you, you set me up so well. It's good. <laughs> I have read the book already. <laughs> because, you know, one of my 21 milestones is to make a bold declaration, I release you from my wrath. And it's the third, uh, it's the third milestone. I don't know about you, but I've found that when I start ruminating or that I start, yeah, I go back and I start rethinking it and rehashing it. Um, I need to say, make a verbal declaration out loud. And, Look, with what you do, you can probably explain this better than me. I just discovered it and thought, wow, this works. But if I say it out loud, I release you from my wrath. It's gone from my mind and the, my heart and the process of that. I'm getting it out and then I'm hearing it and I'm taking it in. Right. Absolutely. Death and and it works so well. That's, yes, for sure amazing how how strong it is the power of our tongues and solomon talked about that a lot yeah. <laughs> it's what we say we begin to believe it for sure i, I yeah. wish you'd been with me while i was writing this book because i can tell you have wonderful insights well thank you very much so um what can you tell us about from like a, a dna standpoint or a family experience standpoint how does the way that we've seen forgiveness or unforgiveness modeled influence the way that we forgive or don't forgive others 
Well, I mean, it's it's the culture in which, you know, it's that nature versus nurture thing. We do see things modeled. Um, I I just happen to think that there's much. We're constantly teaching our kids. And we teach them how to tie their shoes. We teach them, you know, how to feed themselves. What if we learned how to teach them how to forgive? Mm -hmm. And, you know, my understanding from my research is that from from, uh, conception, according to memory theorists, Mm -hmm. from the time of conception all the way up, until 10 or 12 years old, there's an imprint um, based upon the significant events that we go through. Mm -hmm. That imprint on our psychosocial, emotional well-being that propels us on a trajectory um, that carries us up into adulthood and through the rest of our lives. And so if we have deep pains and hurts, it, you know, that really does. You talk about generational curses and generational sin. And um, I long for a generation. I long for a generation to know the freedom. And we see that there's so much in our culture. Uh, just the other other day, I, I heard from someone that says, I hate that person. I will never forget them, forgive them from something and turn around and saw me standing there and goes, oh. <laughs> Shouldn't say it in front of you. <laughs> I should, not just because I'm a pastor, but because I just <laughs> written this book. Oh, yeah. But hey, I can slip into that too. Any of us can, right? Absolutely. Um, and we learn from our parents. We learn, we see this, you know, from our generations, from from the people that we love very much. Um, I just happen to believe that the Lord wants to set us free. So imagine, imagine how we can live so free and share so much with such a broken world. And you know, I, I believe God longs for his people to walk in that freedom. I agree. And so is forgiveness something that we can get better at over time? Does it get faster as you've, you know, been through more things than when you recognize that you are holding on to unforgiveness? Do you let it go now faster than you did when you first had this revelation? I guess fi- finding the tools, having the tools um, better equips me, yeah. Yeah. and uh, you know, I I think about you know having having Teflon, you know, where stuff just doesn't seem to stick as much. Um, you know, it it, it goes out to the people that I relate with, and it, it could be my own family, it could be with the folks that help me out at the local deli, you know. Um, if they sense the fruit of the spirit of peace, even when I may be upset about something and I'm thinking about any other number of things, but they just, they get what they need. The Lord provides that. And that's the gift. That's the fruit of the spirit that they're just able to come and get whatever is needed at their time of need. And, if that makes it that much easier for them to to receive the fruit that they need to help them in their circumstances, man, that's a Jesus thing. I could never manufacture that. I, I sure sure couldn't do it in some phony way. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's definitely true. So how do we know once we've forgiven someone um, if we should reconcile or if we should maintain boundaries? How would you answer that? Like what kind of, if there's any criteria, I'm sure it's a case by case scenario. Yeah, I think it is. I think healthy boundaries. We've we've heard some wonderful, you know, stuff come from some very, very talented um, authors on having healthy boundaries. Um, You know, it, it makes for 
for good, healthy relationships, but also it helps us to be more authentic and more transparent in and claiming, you know, we had this term in some of my chaplaincy training, you know, claiming yourself, <laughs> you know, and claiming your place and everything. Uh, there's, there's definitely a, a healthiness in that. And I believe God wants us because, you know, when, when Jesus said, you know, to the, to the uh, man, uh, love God and love your neighbor as yourself. He, he didn't say love your neighbor more than yourself. Right. Mm-hmm. It was to love both yourself and love your neighbor. And there's a sense in which I believe uh, loving ourselves. And you know how many people I talk with um, and you know, especially I do a lot of men's ministry and I'm, you know, I, I'm not ashamed of that. I really enjoy having a chance to minister to guys. Do you know how, how few of them are able to look in the mirror and say, I love you? Wow. I don't know what your experience is, but wow. to be able to look in the mirror and say, I love you. And even to start with, I like you. Right. Yeah. You know, you know that you're a great time. Jesus for Jesus for some reason thinks I'm a blast. I think he <laughs> just to keep him laughing. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, the self-talk in our culture is very negative in general. We're almost taught that that's the way that we should behave towards mm-hmm. ourselves. So yeah, that's that's a tough habit to break for a lot of people. Absolutely. So um, how can we know that we've actually crossed that threshold and truly forgiven someone? Or is it always a bit of a back and forth? You know, um, in Journey to Forgiveness, 21 Milestones to Freedom, um, I try and address that question. I, I think part of it is, does this particular episode of being wronged still take up as much time yeah, in your brain. And, and you know, I, I like telling folks, don't let bums take up space in your brain unless they're paying for it. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Evict them. Right. Um, how much time is spent thinking about that? Imagine what you can do with the time and the energy now that you don't have to think about them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And how much more creative that you can be mm-hmm. in that. Think about, uh, and I think it's a fruit of the experience, but there's also, you know, it's a journey to be walked out. It is a journey. And sometimes, look, you know, what are some of the things, you know, if we're hurting physically, if we're, you know, are experiencing loss or we're experiencing some some other kind of uh, pain in our life or we're sleepy, what, what's the classics for, for um, addiction? Uh, if we're hungry, we're sleepy, all of those things that get, you know, propel us down a road where we're a little bit more tempted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When, uh, or, or headed more towards self-medicating or self-pity or any of those things. Um, I think it's being real with ourselves, but you know, I gotta just stress God loves you so, so much. Mm-hmm. And he knows that there are going to be times when you're going to have setbacks and and potholes yep. times when you're going to wrench your ankle on this journey of forgiveness. And you know what? Just walk in it, Gracious. embrace it. And, you know, shake it off and move on, okay. you know, get back up, get going again. Right. So, You're so- resilient. Absolutely. So what have I not asked you that you want to make sure you leave with our audience? Oh, you have grilled me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
Oh my goodness. I'm no, I don't know how I'm gonna recover. You, <laughs> you know, I <laughs> you're fun. I I this is very enjoyable. It's a joy to be with you. Thank you. You know, um come to know the healing presence of the Lord. And um, just keep moving. If I can just just put that out there. Yeah, there's going to be times. Um, all I can say is, in, if God can do the work in me, and you read my bio, you know my testimony. Um, one in six men were targeted by a, fe- a pedophile. As a child, the statistics say one in four women were targeted for sexual abuse as children. If you can think of, you know, being in a uh, being in a room, a crowded room, and you think one of six, and you have all these folks who are very, very broken, and the real question is, are they? What are they doing? How are they? Are they living free? Are they living in forgiveness? Um, being able to forgive those that wounded them. Um, unfortunately, with the statistics, and I'll tell you what, I'm thankful because the Lord is the only one who could help me beat the statistics. And it plays itself out in self medicating, it plays itself out in. Um, you know, relationship disasters, and anybody can have them. It can play itself out in infidelity. It can, you know, um, um, ways that we try to cope in our own energy. And uh, all I could say is that if God could do the work in me, and, you know, and regardless of that, it's like David's smooth stone. If God can take the hard things in our lives, and just like that, you know, those five rocks, that da- those five stones that David bent over and he pulled them out of the stream, those, those stones, no doubt, had encountered the water running over them. They'd also encountered the vibration of the water going over them. It knocked the garbage off and they were just there waiting to be used so david could come by for such an opportunity and pick up those hard things and pull one out of his his shepherd's purse and he could take that one and he could use that hard thing and he could propel that and get it to its target and slay a giant. And we already know what he do with the other four. Goliath had four brothers. I no, I was about to say I've heard that <laughs> before. Very nice. And whether he's whether he was the one that threw all the stones from that point or somebody else did, if we can all pick up one of those stones and you know in our lives, and it brings freedom and wholeness to another human being. There is no, there is no experience like that. And I'm seeing that with this book. And it's just, it's a simple book. And I just pray that the word gets out. Forgiveness is a really big deal. Jesus was never, never casual about forgiveness. Right? Absolutely. So tell us one more time, where can people go to get your book and to find out more about you? I would love for folks to go check out davidpetersonbooks.com. David Peterson, and that's with an S-O-N, davidpetersonbooks.com, which will direct you to Amazon. So if you prefer just to go hook up with Amazon, just go take a look at it. There's an author's bio. Um, uh, davidpetersonbooks.com, there's a way to get in touch with me. I'd love to hear your stories, your testimonies, and and um, your thoughts and your ideas. 
Um, it keeps me keeps me going, and I just I love hearing your testimonies because you're so real. So uh, go check that out, and if you you know you happen to want to catch some of my preaching, it's at apostles lutheran dot org. We're a spirit filled, Bible believing, born again Lutheran church. Awesome. Thanks for allowing me to give a little plug. These yeah. are the things that keep me going too. Yeah, absolutely. I will put all of those links in the show notes for anybody who wants to find them. And thank you so much for uh, for all of your wonderful wisdom and for being willing to be so transparent, Pastor David. That's this has been fantastic. Thanks, Dr. Lauren. Hit me up anytime. Hey there, it's Nicole Yunus, host of the How to Study the Bible podcast, where every single week we join together to encounter God through His Word. You can subscribe at lifeaudio.com. Are you looking for a holistically minded healthcare practitioner who truly treats root cause rather than symptom suppression? Unfortunately, even in the alternative healing professions, this isn't a given. That's why I've created wholehealthdoctor.com, a resource to help connect patients to healthcare practitioners in their area who share a root cause philosophy. Alternatively, most of the practitioners listed also practice telehealth. So if there isn't anyone local to you, you can still find a great practitioner to help you regain optimal health. Go to wholehealthdoctor.com. That's whole healthdr.com, type in your location or just the specialty that you're looking for and find the practitioner who's right for you. Thanks for listening to Christian Natural Health. This show is run by you. So please write in with topic and guest suggestions for future shows. For more great content, subscribe to Dr. Lauren's blog at www.drlaurendeville.com or follow her on Facebook or Twitter at Dr. Lauren DeVille. If you enjoyed the show, don't forget to share it with your friends and give us a five-star rating in iTunes. It really helps us to stand out so other people can discover great content as well. Have a great week and God bless you. Hey there, it's Nicole Eunice from the How to Study the Bible podcast, and I'd love to invite you to join us as we weekly discover a passage of God's Word together. From beginning to end, from principles to practicals, we are here to make sure that God's Word is powerful and relevant to your life. If that sounds like something you're looking for, I would love to invite you to subscribe. You can go to lifeaudio.com and search How to Study the Bible, and we'll see you there.